Hi again everybody, Andrew here with Ram Design. Okay, today is a new day. Today it's all about the re-envisioned Bugatti T35C. We'll show you how we built it using SolidWorks in the 3D model, how we export it out to an STL file, slicing it in Cura and printing it on our Anycubic Mega S. Buckle up, because here we go. Hi, it's Andrew from uh, Ram Design and Drafting here again, um, and this is a continuation of the Bugatti T35 T35C design that I've done um, and made it available on my uh, patrons page. Um, anyways, um, I'll just do a quick go. This gives you an idea of what we do. Um, uh, there will be a video showing a more in depth uh, go here with the, with the design, but uh, we'll just go up through the tree here and show you. The process, what I did here, right now it's scaled here right now up to a certain scale for one to one. It'll zip down here to a smaller scale, disappear. I'll show you here quickly. You can scale it. I draw it to uh, a certain scale and then I make sure from one to one, from wheelbase to wheelbase, it matches the the exact uh, car um, in the long run. So, uh, But uh, I'm resizing it here now. It'll take a couple seconds and then I'll pull the tree up to the very beginning what I start with. A lot of times I'll set up the views, the images, uh, front view, side view, top view, etc. There it is now at the scale that I drew it at. And it's not a real big deal. I usually scale it up at the end anyway. So I'll pull this up. You can get an idea what uh, what goes on here. And there's a lot of stuff in the tree. And this is using SolidWorks. Uh, I really like SolidWorks. I can't say a bad thing about it. But uh, anyways, these here are turned off. I will show all my views. And this is what you set up your views um, to model from. So I end up going on the planes, front, side, back, and, and the top view, uh, which is actually the bottom in this case, the way I set it up. But anyways, um, take those views, uh, set them up on your planes so you can actually draw on those planes and extrude across. I do the uh, first base, uh, which is... Uh, the profile base, um, that's the base of the car. I draw a solid block that covers the entire area that I'm going to be modeling from. And not all models are done this way. Uh, the Bugatti is a little easier because it's a little more boxy, so it's a little easier to do that. But then I cut from the top, do the profile, cut the car from the top. The next cut is from this view here. So I drew, actually, I, I'll just turn that so you can see. I do an outer plane along here, a cutting cutting tool basically, and I cut through. So that's what that is there. So uh, so basically I'm making cutting tools and different planes, cutting them through to match the profile of the sketch itself. So it makes it pretty easy to produce something, reproduce something that's, that's very close to the original. So then I do another cut here, that's from the bottom into where the wheel well is going to be. I did a hole there for the axle uh, do the next cut. There's the cockpit, and there's the cockpit done now. And now I'll just quickly go through here, and you'll see what happens each time. I throw some fillets in there to round stuff off here, um, and I'll just keep on coming, coming down. I actually produce some planes here uh, to do some more drawing. Do there some more cuts. I cut the little uh, mount here. I actually did did the mount here um, for the windscreen, and I took it off because it's hard to. Um, have your fillets go around there, and I'll draw it again, and then later you'll see that. So there's all my fillets, rounding everything off to match the views. Um, and at this point, you don't want to get into too, too, too much detail, uh, especially on the model, because you want to be able to shell it out. The shell will err if you have something small in it, like a gas cap, because it'll want to shell inside that, and it'll err out because it's the, the radius are too small, or the surfaces are too small. So I get to this point and I say, okay, I want to shell it now. So I end up shelling it out. 
and it'll cut out the body of this whole thing. Now, if I was to turn off uh, some of these uh, views, um, you could probably see the shell out, but if I pop, pop in here, you can see uh, the shell. I'll take the views off now. We're pretty much set here now for this. this. So I'll come up here and take the uh, sketches off or turn off. I'll leave the front on. Um, aside, I might turn off. Um, and you can do this while you're drawing, uh, just so you can actually see everything. There's the shell out now. With that view gone, you can actually see it now. And that's shelled out. I actually put this hole in here so it's shelled around the hole. And that gives you a, quite a robust. You can drive this the shell thickness too. If you're going to do a large scale, you could actually go probably to a smaller uh, wall thickness. I play around with that and do a test print sometimes and find that, oh, that this is actually it's too thin. Um, depending on what your scale is going to be and you can change that out as you go so then um, do some more fillets I'll go right skim right down here and take some of the cutoffs <coughs> there I'm starting to do the uh, the frame the chassis uh, mount you'll see me draw something in here for the chassis mount I design as I go kind of here on the fly so I figure out how my chassis is going to mount to my body etc so I'll spin down here a little farther there's my gas cap my rad cap and maybe I'll turn off those front and back views now too um, just to give you a little better idea of what I'm doing I'm gonna turn off that and the front view and these you can name these views too so it's a little easier for to see which ones are which too uh, it might be a little easier for you but I'm so used to doing it now it's not a big deal but it's nice to label all these especially if you go back to it down the road you can see, uh, you can just go up and grab the, the view when it's labeled. So so there's the Bugatti started there now. Uh, zip down through here again. And I can, uh, like I say, on my Patreon's uh, page, I'll give more depth and detail about uh, what I do, how I do it, and why I do it. Um, but this will give you a quick, a quick little go. There's my seats and stuff in. Um, and... interior my dash my dash is all done now and depending on what your uh, chassis is going to be like too in the motor this is actually a slot car so you may end up um, having to do um, more work on the interior here to give you more clearance for a motor etc depending on what your shaft length is and where you can mount your motor in your chassis etc and I draw the chassis from the, uh, the, the profile from the bottom of this too so uh, and that's almost done so now I go down here It'll draw all my cutouts for my venting. It actually comes out pretty cool. And then I scale it to, I do a, do a scale. I look at the specs of the Bugatti, do a scale from here to here, and do a ratio, and I scale it to what's required up or down. Usually I draw pretty small. And that's the Bugatti. Um, and it'll actually scale up here in a second. There it is there. And uh, that's one-to-one -one scale, true scale. And I uh, usually export out like that and have my uh, patrons scale it as they wish, whether it's uh, at 124 or 132, etc. And that's how I built the Bugatti. So at this point, the Bugatti is pretty much finished off. So all we have to do now, I left off. Originally, I had the steering wheel in the car, um, and I printed it with it, so it was too difficult. So I've actually stripped off the steering wheel. Um, and you'll see that in the earlier prints. I'll show you some earlier prints. But... Uh, all you have to do is now export. Uh, where am I going here? Uh, save as. And I'm getting low on memory here, it seems. But anyway, I have to save as an STL file. And I'll go up to my uh, Bugatti page and uh, typically say uh, to export it out as an STL. I'm I already have one in there right now, so I'm just going to go and put in the temp directory right now. I had one right over top of the other one I had because I might have made a change or two. So, but anyways, you just basically have to go and save. It'll now take your uh, uh, your model and export it out to an STL so that you can actually bring it into Cura or whatever software you're using to print. There's all your uh, your triangles, meshes, etc. The only thing you have to watch when you do this is that if you have more than one model within this, you want to export it as a, out as a single STL file. And there's an option in SolidWorks to do that, but we won't get into that. But uh, now it's actually one 
one in continuous STL file. Um, all this will be printed all at once. So now I can close out of this and close out of SolidWorks. I don't want to save it because I know it's already saved. And we're going to uh, shut this down. And then we're going to open up uh, our version of Cura. So um, I don't want to download right now. That's a, there's a new one out there. So, but anyways, I all I have to do now is export. I'm going to open up my file manager in another window. Um, old school here. Use the file manager. Anyways, um, I run over here, grab that file that I'd ex exported, and. Um, Go now. Oh yeah, I put it in the temp. Sorry. Um, and um, I'll just drag it in. It's going to come up really big now because it's one to one scale. So then I turn around and I um, you'll see it's huge. It's just huge in this. So I click on it and I'll scale it down. So if I want to go down to and actually make, uh, typically I design them so that I can um, uh, either do 124 scale or I can actually do um, 132 scale. Now you could change your wall thickness uh, and do something smaller if you wanted to too. But let's let's size it for 124. So I have to size it down at about 4.4.2% 4 for 124 scale. And there it is. So now I want to just rotate it so it's on the bed properly. And we'll go to this view. There it is in the bed. And that's now at, at the scale for 124 scale for my anacubic mega S. And it's just a matter of then slicing it. Now, typically, I'll slice it, and I could do the high res um, at 0.1. I want it the best quality print I can for my clients. Um, and I'll put some support in. Typically, I'll only support um, to whatever touches the bed, unless I have some huge design changes in here that are required but typically my dashes I try to keep my dashes so that they aren't hung over very far um, and it'll print fine this way at, uh, at the 60 overhang um, and I'll actually turn around and make sure my uh, uh, my infill etc is all set right so that looks good there um, and then I'll basically uh, tell it to slice it'll take a couple minutes here and it's always good to check your um, your preview of your slice, just to make sure that you don't have any holes. SolidWorks does a really good job um, with their models. Um, it uh, um, you have real good control of your wall thicknesses and stuff. So I've never really had a problem with this, unless I, my shell of my my body is uh, maybe too thin, and I've given given myself enough when I go to scale back and forth. And I guess you could draw your scale to 1 to 24, and then you wouldn't have to worry about that. But I like being able to drive things. And in SolidWorks, you can go back to the main model and change your shell thickness uh, really easily, and then pull it down to the tree, and then actually export it out again. And it's pretty easy. So uh, it makes it pretty neat. So then I'll just do a quick view of my preview. I could use more horsepower here on this machine uh, in my home office. but um, And then you can actually go in and and pull this down and see your uh, what things are actually uh, are supported, etc. And you can zoom in too. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it actually prints very very well. You can see my uh, memory. I'm gonna think it beef up my my computer again here. But so that's that. So then I just say save to removable drive. Take my drive out because I'm not networked with my printer, and I start to print. And it's just uh, just that simple. So. Um, and we'll go to show you what it's printing on the printer. Here is the first finished print of the Bugatti T35C. The chassis looks like it came out very well. And the Bugatti itself, I've got some cleaning up to do. And I have to put a little piece of acetate for the top of the, uh, the windscreen. But uh, it looks like it came out pretty good. I'll clean it up and show you another picture. Here are the, uh, the, uh, here are the models after printing. 
Just a few little glitches. We I actually ended up running out of power and had to re, uh, do a resume print uh, for this one, but uh, um, you can see uh, it's all there. Here's a higher res printing of the Bugatti in black. Uh, you can see it's uh, a lot better than the first uh, couple that I did, just doing it at uh, lower res, but the higher res is awesome. And then I show one here also of a Bugatti that's been painted. It's a lower res, the white one that you saw earlier. Um, that's it. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed my work, please support Future Works by becoming a Patreon member at www dot patron slash design modeling or see our paypal page at www.paypal.me slash my 3d models now i appreciate you watching and have a great day